so we're going to introduce finite difference method in first of all in a one dimensional domain so because in a one dimensional domain you don't really have to consider any geometry any geometry you have is a, a, a line right and we'll see that the method is going to naturally extend into two and three dimensions as long as the two and three dimensions are basically Cartesian product of one dimensional geometries and then after we uh, are done with finite difference method we'll introduce finite volume and finite elements methods which are much more suitable for solving differential equations in weird geometry and domains all right so let's start with the finite difference method the primary advantage of finite difference method is really its simplicity it's just a very simple which makes many things good so first of all it's very computationally efficient so if you have the same mesh finite difference method usually takes the least amount of computing time to perform and that makes it uh, a, a good choice if you uh, have a lot of computation so for example some of the world's biggest uh, direct numerical simulation of fluid flows which is basically solving the Navier-Stokes equation with turbulence with brute force are done with finite difference methods and a lot of the weather forecast is done with finite difference methods right because I mean the forecasting the weather in seven days wouldn't be very useful if the computation takes seven days so so finite difference method is uh, quite good if you have a domain that is pretty regular and you want to resolve the entire domain with pretty much uniform resolution which means you, the, what happens here in the domain is not that different from what, what happens elsewhere in the domain that allows us to use a regular mesh which is something like this so if we have a regular domain this is X this is Y we are basically going to discretize the domain into small rectangles and in a lot of the finite difference method, the rectangles are of uniform size. Okay, and then remember, what's the primary way uh, the finite difference differ from other methods? Is what quantities the computer keeps, right? What quantity does computer keep in finite difference methods? the value of our unknown function at the grid points so we are not going to store the volume average in these squares we are just going to look at the intersection of these lines and store the value at these lines in two-dimensional domains we usually use two indices to identify the value at each grid point so let's say u of x and y is the unknown is the solution to a partial differential equation right uh, sometimes it's also a function of t so let's say the general case in two dimension u is a function of x y and t and remember our goal is to discretize this equation into ordinary differential equations so we are going to be representing u at x i so x i is here x i x i minus 1 x i plus 1 and we also have y y j y j plus 1 y j minus 1 we are going to represent u at x i y j and t which is a function of only time we are going to be representing this as u of i j underscore uh, so, so the so the uh, subscripts are the spatial location of the grid that's a function of t right so this is how we represent an unknown function in a partial differential equation right so this uij would be this point and if you can imagine there is another axis that goes out of the screen which is the time axis we are looking at an array of one dimensional functions right <laughs> we're looking at a big potentially pretty big array of one dimensional functions that just goes in time and the goal of finite difference method or actually any PDE discretization method 
is to derive a set of ordinary differential equations that governs the evolution of these one-dimensional functions that goes out of the screen, right? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, how we do that actually depends on what equation we are solving. So let's start with a hyperbolic partial differential equation. 